a heat flow to the surroundings will cause energy to be dissipated during a transfer. So a heat flow occurs between two points when there is a difference in temperature between them. For example, let's consider a hot drink. There is a heat flow between the hot drink and the cooler surroundings. So as heat is lost, the drink cools down. But how can we reduce the energy lost from a heat flow? We can do that using insulation. Insulation is the process of wrapping an object with a material of low thermal conductivity to reduce the rate of heat flow between it and the surroundings. So heat flow can't be stopped completely, but it can be slowed down. Now, insulation is really important as it means we don't have to keep reheating things or cooling them again and again, which saves energy, time and money. A flask is a good example of insulation. The flask has an insulated case and it keeps the drink inside warm for a long period of time. It does this by reducing the heat flow between the warm drink and the cooler surroundings. In a similar way, a fridge is insulated. The inside is kept cold as the inside is insulated. It works by reducing the heat flow between the warmer outside and the cooler inside. So what kinds of materials should be used for insulators? Heat flows more slowly through materials with a low thermal conductivity. Now remember that thermal conductivity is a measure of how quickly heat flows through a material. For your exam, you're not expected to recall the formal definition of thermal conductivity. The atoms in metal, for example, are closely packed together in a rigid structure. This means they are good conductors of heat, and heat flow through them is very fast. We can notice this property of metals all around us in everyday life. For example, when you're cooking, think how hot the pan is to touch, or on a winter's day, how cold a metal railing might feel. Foam, on the other hand, is a solid that's made up of trapped air pockets. So foam is not a good conductor of heat, as gases have a low thermal conductivity. That means heat flow through it is very slow. So is there a way we can increase the amount of insulation even further? Heat will take longer to flow through a thicker material than a thinner material with the same low thermal conductivity. And this is simply because the heat has more to travel through to escape. Let's look at two examples. A t-shirt has a relatively thin material so heat can escape through it very quickly. This is really useful to us, say, on a hot day when we want the heat to escape the body quickly. A coat, on the other hand, has a relatively thick material, so heat can escape through this much more slowly. And this is really useful to us on a cold day where we really want the body to store the heat. So the thickness of an insulator is limited by things like how much it might cost and how practical it might be to use or wear. For your exam, you aren't expected to know and state these examples of insulation. However, you might have to describe how insulation applies to a system when it's given to you. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.